Oh, it's slow. <laughs> Coming up. We're live. We're live. Okay. Good morning. Good <laughs> afternoon. Good evening to everyone out there. Facebook. Hold on, man. That's not that's not my intro. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is up, my exchange family from all over the world? And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Kevin Oseman. I'm your senior enlisted advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guest today, I would like to introduce my lovely co-hosts, Liam Matthews and Julie Mitchell. How y'all doing? Hey, 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 hey. Y'all ready today? today? Today's going to be a fun interview. It is, yeah. Ready. So, so today we have a very special guest that you all know and love. He kind of laid the foundation for me here at the exchange, and then he handed me the keys to the Ferrari when he left, right? But that's not saying that the company car is a Ferrari here, but uh, all the amazing <laughs> stuff that he created uh, here feels like a Ferrari. So Wait, he's a are Leah and I the Ferrari? You are the Ferrari. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah awesome. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. So he, he's the OC. He's the original chief of Chief Chat, and I can't wait to uh, sit down and chop it up with him. So uh, Julie, please introduce today's guest. Oh, this is a super special episode of Cheese Chat. It is a reunion. Our first host is back with us this time as a guest to help us celebrate the first anniversary of our military exclusive series. Please help me welcome 325th Mission Support Group Superintendent and original Chief Chat host, Chief Master Sergeant Lewis Reyes. Chief Reyes, thanks so much for joining us again here on Chief Chat. We're super excited to have you back. And for everybody watching, drop a note in the comments. Let us know where you're tuning in from. If you have any questions for Chief Reyes or comments, you can leave those. We'll read them live. Now is a great time to start your watch party to enjoy this live interview with your friends. And if you're not following our page, you should because we have Chief Chats every week and great military exclusive guests all summer long. Chief Reyes, my brother, man, how you doing? First off, word up, word up. I'm doing good. <laughs> Life, you know. How you doing? I'm doing wonderful. I'm doing wonderful, man. And welcome, welcome back to Chief Chat, man. How, how's it feel to return back to something that you started? It feels good. You know, I've been watching. I've been watching every now and then. I log in, mm -hmm. I check in, check out the show, uh, see what's going on, maybe leave some comments here and there. So it, it feels good to come back and kind of, you know. Get to get to chat with all of you here for the next thirty minutes and, and, and see what's going Absolutely. on in your life and, and everything else. So, so can you tell us where you called in from today? Ooh, I am in Panama City Beach, Florida, at Tyndall Air Force Base. And I, let me say Is that, that again: Tinder, Tinder, <laughs> Tyndall Air Force Base. And for those for those watching, they might be wondering, well, why does she say Tyndall? So, a couple of weeks ago, they had uh, Maya on the show, right? She's for those that don't know, she's Blossom, uh, Amy on the Big Bang Theory, neuroscientist, Arthur. Uh, I mean, I don't know what she can't do, to be honest. And she's on there, and I put a note, and I said, hey, come to Tyndall to see the truth. And I think Julie tells her, and the minute she says, come to Tyndall, her face goes like, huh? And I was like, man, that, that's weird. Why did she make that face? Like, like, is that a bad thing? Like, what's wrong with Tyndall? And so as you guys are talking about it, I don't know, a couple, maybe a minute or something, 30 seconds or a minute, uh, Judy, I think, says again, yeah, he says, come to, he, he used to be our chief, but come to Tyndall to visit. And she goes, oh, my God, I thought you said Tinder Air Force Base. And I, <laughs> it was just like, Osby's like, nah, we're not stopping right. We're not stopping right. <laughs> Tyndall Air Force Base. So, so for so everyone there. I, just, just to correct that story just slightly, it was actually Leah, because Leah would try to do a, a, a horrible impersonation of you. Oh, <laughs> right. gosh, what? Why did we have to say that? <laughs> well, was was actually, that what it was? It was actually Leah's <laughs> reading your comment in her, in her Chief Reyes voice, which did <laughs> Will it, not it, be it, recreated. Listen, I, gave, I gave her an E for effort, but the execution was probably not, not too, probably there. For, Leah, but, I got but, your back, girl. It was spot on. Leah, it was, it was hilarious. And, uh, yo, yo. Yeah, that, that was too funny, man. <laughs> hey, but she was a good sport about it. Like, the minute you, you said Tim don't explain it, she was like, Ah, oh, okay. I, I get it. She was happy when I when I first saw her face. I was like, she was like, I was like, oh man, you could go back and see that. It was kind of funny. It was kind of <laughs> funny to go back 
<laughs> watch like and then when she realizes we're not talking about the dating app so yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> so chief can you tell us just a little bit about you yourself um how long you've been serving kind of why you joined the air force i don't know that we ever really got into you on the show so now's kind of your chance to give us a little glimpse into the life of you oh. Yeah, so, you know, I joined back in 1997. I've been in about 23 years now. I was going to be 24 in September. And, you know, why did I join? I was finished with high school. I was kind of tired of going to school. I was like, man, I want to do something different with my life. So I joined the military. And, of course, you know, go to my first base. And you know what they say? Go to school. <laughs> <laughs> the very thing I was trying to get away from is the very thing they're pushing. Go to school, go to school, you know, and... and it's important because, you know, this is a finite amount of time. You only have a uniform on for a finite amount of time. And once you get, once you get out of this uniform, whether you separate or retire, you're going to compete against America. So you got to be ready to compete against America. So get that education and, you know, help. It, it was good mentorship from, it was a senior airman back then that told me that. He, was oh, like, wow. he had a master's degree and everything. And I was like, man, this guy got a master's senior airman. But, you know, you remember senior airman back then, they were like 12 year senior airmen. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. No. They, they, <laughs> they were old they school. Were some- yeah, they were, they were some OG uh, CRC. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Absolutely. But yeah, yeah. Uh, here I am now loving what I do. You know, I tell people, you know, this is too easy. You know, this job is easy. It's fun taking care of airmen, taking care of people. You know, there's always challenges. It's always different. And as long as you love what you're doing, keep doing it. Glad to hear that you're doing well, Chief. So catch us up. What have you been doing since you left the exchange last year? And how's it going there at Tyndall? It's going great. <laughs> so, you know, Tyndall Air Force Base, right? 325th Fighter Wing, home of the Checker Tails. We fall in the Air Combat Command. Um, the, the mission here primarily is to train, train and prepare F-22 Raptor pilots, intelligence officers, and maintainers, right? That's, that's the overall mission um some of the jets currently you know with the rebuild going on and everything a lot of the jets are or all the jets are at Eglin but we're poised for the future September 2023 to have about three squadrons at F-35s coming to Tyndall Air Force Base so um I think that equals and don't quote me I think that equals around 76 jets which is a lot and they're all not coming at once obviously right this takes years and um so hopefully with that 2023 maybe four or five years to get all the squadrons here. You know, this, this is the base of the future. Um, and of course, as many of you are aware, Hurricane Michael devastated the area back on yeah. October 10th, 2018. I remember coming out here a month after that with Mr. Shaw, the leadership team, and one of the first places that, that opened up to bring a sense of normalcy. And that's probably the first, you know, bring a sense of normalcy to, uh, to Tyndall was the exchange, right? They opened up yeah. the exchange, I think a month after that, to kind of get, you know, no one was here. Every, a lot of people were evacuated, very minimal foot traffic, but the exchange was open to support the troops. And we came back a year later, things were, you know, we're getting better. There were still buildings, you know, demolished, devastated, and, you know, working through the military process, contracting and everything. It takes time to kind of get that going. But unfortunately what happened here in 2020, right? Just as, just as Tyndall was looking up, progress was starting to be made to rebuild the base of the future, COVID hits. Boom, and that, and that affected, you know, everyone on a global scale, affected everywhere, everywhere you're looking at, right? So the rebuild was kind of put on hold. Um, but fast forward to today, if you were to come back from the way it was 2018 to when I came back in 2019, a lot of those buildings are now down, demolished. Um, wow. Construction, you know, we just broke ground on a new CDC. Uh, it's just a lot of moving parts, a lot of moving parts. So and it's hard timing everything, you know, with the arrival of, of, of jets coming here, 2023, and the construction of, of facilities to support, to support the number of personnel that will come to support all those jets. So it's, you know, we're working with a lot of um, about 40 different, uh, uh, 40 different projects, sorry, with a, with a bunch of, I can't count the number of organizations we're working with to help mm-hmm. make Tyndall a reality, right? To help make Tyndall the installation of the future. This is, Tyndall's actually the prototype for that. So what you see at Tyndall, you'll probably see pop up at other um, installations. Um, you know, it's poised to be the home of the fifth generation fighter jet and hopefully the sixth and seventh generation fighters as well. Um, 
you know, a, a lot of smart people are engineering Tyndall to kind of be a smart city. Mm -hmm. So where where mm -hmm. reconstruction designs that will like kind of inter interconnect the, the facilities with infrastructure. Um, there's a lot of, of technology uh, to increase, you know, cybersecurity, perimeter defense. As a matter of fact, I don't know if you've ever seen this online, but we have these robotic dogs. I don't know if you've seen that. Like, no. these, things are, these things are crazy. Like, like they're like, <laughs> like robot dogs and they use virtual reality headsets to control them and they could talk to you. They, they catch you out on the perimeter. Um, I mean, technology is wild. And the things you could deploy from these, 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 these uh, dogs, I don't want to call them dogs, but robotic, <laughs> robotic dogs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it's it's amazing. It's crazy, you know. And the intent is, you know, to, you know, you have security forces. You only have a finite amount of forces that have to support and defend, you know, the installation. And you know, Tyndall's pretty big. Um, so to kind of cover those areas where security forces can't go, you have these robotic dogs out there to kind of oh, check man. it out. And if somebody somebody were to come on installation, you know, they could kind of scream halt. You know, you're on a federal installation, and the person might say, "Oh, sorry, I didn't know I was here because they're hunting or whatever it is." Or it might be an adversary trying to get on. And, you know, during that time, we have security forces going out there to, to you know, control the threat and make sure oh. that nothing happens to the base. But robotic dogs, we it is crazy. We need an interview with the robotic dog. Can we get one as a guest on Chat? <laughs> it'll, just, it'll just hop around and I, That and sounds over. lovely. Let's, <laughs> let's do it. I, but, we, you know, I could probably yeah. get the commander. I could probably get the commander. And uh, um, the master. No, I want the dog. There. I want the dog. Like, Sorry. They'll have the dog next to them. They'll have the dog next to them. <laughs> hey, maybe they'll retrofit it with some weapons or something like that. You know, oh, wow. <laughs> anti, anti drone strikes or whatever. I, I, it, it, these dogs are just, I'm telling you, the technology out there it is crazy. It's crazy. Wow. It's all coming to Tyndall. It's all coming to Tyndall to build this base of the future. And of course, with that, you know, we're, 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 with the rebuild is, is kind of being set up with a campus like environment. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So airmen could, could walk, you know, connecting all the work, uh, working, living and community areas in one area. So, we, you know, they moved to CDC, which is kind of far away now, close to the BX, the commissary, everything. So when families come to pick up their kids, you know, they could stop at the BX or the commissary to kind of do the shopping or do, finish their daily errands, whatever they have to do. So we're kind of setting it up with, with campus style mentality in mind. I Man. love so that. Tindall, come to Tyndall. If you're trying to be part of something great, base of the future, you got to come to Tyndall. I mean, you got the beaches. Listen, yeah. up. so you, you kind of slipped. The beaches? Oh, the yeah. beaches. <laughs> the beaches. <laughs> I'm like, beaches. Beaches. The beach. Beaches. What are you guys? <laughs> hey, KO, man, what's going on? Over? Listen, listen. <laughs> But, so you kind of set the story up of, of, of me going <laughs> in the woods and, 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 and kind of hunting or whatever the case may be. And a dog walks up on me and starts talking to me. And so I'm looking at today. Today's 420. I would immediately take my stuff to go get a drug oh, test. I would, I would go take my stuff to get a drug test because I'm like, what is going on? I got a, <laughs> I got a robotic dog telling me, to, talking to me. Like, it, yeah, it would just throw, throw me off a little bit. But that's, I'm telling you, them, that's them awesome. dogs are crazy, man. It's like, it's like when you see it, you're like, I'll send you a picture of it. It's, it's yeah, actually, we need to send this I think, dog. I think we're naming it today. We just took a bunch of, uh, we just had a, oh. Oh, and they do a naming for all the dogs. So they're naming there's four robotic dogs. And I think I can't remember what one of the name was. Uh, McGruff face, McDog face. I don't know. McDog <laughs> face. Uh, we need to no. vote on this. Let's we can come up with so if you have suggestions for the dog name, drop them in the comments. Please. We'll make sure that Chief Reyes gets Absolutely. those. I will pass them along and, and you know we'll put them in the box with all the other names. But they are gonna name four robotic dogs. It's the future. You know, it's an offset, right? It's not to take over a military working dog, a live working dog's uh, uh, position. This is just to offset that and kind of help sure. with the, you know, defense plan of the installation. So, so you you mentioned the uh, the story, which kind of set set me up for my next question is is about how the exchange really is there supporting the troops. And so you talked about the hurricane, and we were like the first ones to come up on board and, and get ready for the troops. And you served as the the, the Army and Air Force Exchange Service Senior Enlisted Advisor from 2016 to August. So about almost four years, right, uh, of, of sitting in this seat, man. And so can you kind of explain to the reviewers what, what your time at Exchange, what that meant to you? Oh, it was, it was uh, great. I, I loved it. 
you know, it's a hidden gem. I think I told you this, right? Oh, yeah, you did. Exchange is a hidden gem. And what's cool about being in the Air Force right here, I get to take care of airmen, um, you know, take care of airmen all day, people on the installation. But what's cool about that job, right, is you're taking care of uh, not only airmen, you're taking care of the soldiers, airmen, you know, the, the Navy personnel who shop at our, our, at our stores, the Marine Corps, all services, to include their family members, their retirees, the veterans. You're talking about over 20 million. Is the number still 20 million? Where are we at now? Like 35 million customers? What's the number now? It's 38 authorized shoppers. Thir 38 million. 38 million. 30 mil 38 million? Yes, sir. So and, and, it's, and it's growing. And it's growing. Because uh, hey, hey, we got some good I, news gonna, here recently. I was going to jump in this later because I, I heard y'all allow civilians now. DOD civilians. In 30 days, it's coming up. I saw a story of that. <laughs> Well, we we'll are going to wait on an official announcement from OSD to share that good news officially. Oh, but, my um, back. So, yeah, no, you're you're okay. You're okay. Um, <laughs> I saw an article. I saw an article that said it's you good. You did. Yep. So stay tuned, y'all. Good more, more good news to come on that front. <laughs> Let me not spill the beans, but the point is, right? The point is, KO, <laughs> you get to take care of, uh, you know, 38 million people. And, you know, what job in, in, in the military besides being, you know, the, SEAC or some other high, high entity, do you get to take care of that many people across all the services? Um, so it, it's, you know, it's a, it's a great position, what we do for the service member, their families. And a lot of people don't notice, and I don't think I brought it up a lot, but, you know, you hear a lot of people talking about, oh, I just go to Walmart, this and that, this and that. Let me tell you something. Walmart's not going to the war, war zone. Amazon ain't flying out to deliver no package to Iraq or Afghanistan. Let's just keep it real. Yeah. Uh, the CEOs can hit me up if they want. I can say that now because I don't work for the exchange. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you know what I mean? The truth is a lot of stores, a lot of our facilities, and I, I'm not going to say a number, I'll, I'll probably say 30%, are out there as a service to the service members, right? Absolutely. They're not generating profit. Let me tell you what Walmart and these other places would do if they weren't generating a profit. They would close it down and you would have no, nowhere to shop at. And that's the difference between, you know, what the exchange does and what those corporate entities on the outside do, right? We care about the service members. A lot of stores, a lot of, you know, um, fast food, a lot of the services we, we provide is there as a service. They're not making profit. You know, you got the Absolutely. big stores making a profit, right? The Fort Blisses, you got the Ramsteins, the Cadenas, you know, big places like that, uh, Fort Sam's, Blackland, they're making the money, you know, to help offset the cost of what it costs to run those smaller installations where, you know, they're not generating the, the foot traffic or they don't have the people, the personnel there to make millions, but it's as a service to those family members so they could have something on the installation to take care of themselves. Yeah. So I think that's, that's, you know, from the corporate perspective, a lot of people forget that, that we're there to, you know, we're there to support all the troops and it doesn't matter where you're at, you know, um, uh, all over the world, you know, Absolutely. all over the world. Uh, and, and, so, so you, you make a great point, uh, you know, sorry to interrupt you, but, uh, we also got some very, very passionate associates, right? So we got some folks that are proud to serve the folks that serve, and they volunteer to go in harm's way to provide that service for us while we're downrange. So I got a chance to go to uh, San Antonio last week, and we opened up a new uh, exchange at the Fort Sam Houston location. Ooh. And and uh, it, it was amazing seeing the passion and the just, uh, matter of fact, they had a bunch of stories about you, uh, why, the, the associates, right? I, <laughs> I walked into one uh, class six on, uh, I believe it was rent. No, it was, um, it was Fort Sam's class six. And they were like, yeah, last time uh, Chief Reyes came, you know, we cooked the dinner for him and all kind of other stuff. I'm like, what, what am I chopped liver? I felt like chopped liver at the time. I was like, what's, what's up? I said, I don't get nothing. I was like, what's going on? So I, I was like, I got to work on that. I, you know, so man, you made such an impact on the, the associates here as, as well, man. So. Uh, like I said, I'm proud to serve uh, those 38 million, uh, you know, patrons that are able to shop the exchange. But man, we got 35,000 associates that that are man just killing it every single day. Yeah, hey, every day. Hey, you're right, man. You know what I mean? I love the associates. You know, uh, it's they're always out there grinding. And I remember, hey, that lady, she ran the class six. She cooked some Thai food. <laughs> yeah, hey, it was legit. It was it was legit, man. Ooh, you gotta go back and, and try. I just feel I feel bad for you know. I feel bad for, for you, KO, because you came in during COVID. Yeah. And it's just so tough. You haven't had the chance, you know, opportunities I had when I got there, which was I got to travel with everyone. I got to meet everyone. Um, and, you know, without without restrictions. Unfortunately, you you got here August 2020, um, and it was pretty much locked down, right? There was no travel. Yeah, no, absolutely. absolutely. It's probably still locked down somewhat. Yeah, yeah. It's still, we're, we're still limited on what we can do. Uh, like I said, I'm, 
and then I got to meet everybody through a mask. So if I don't remember your forehead, then I, I just don't remember <laughs> who, who you are. So, so everybody out there listening, if, if I've met you and I'll meet you again and I actually get to see your face and I don't remember you, please charge it to my head and not my heart because uh, I'm not good at just remembering forehead. And even like I, Chief, you and I didn't meet in person. Months went by before Absolutely. I met you. And I think I've only seen you in person like once. Like, and yeah. we've been working together for several, several months now. Um, and Chief Reyes, love your passion for the exchange. And you're still um, keeping our mission close to your heart. I can see you're still super passionate about us and the work that we do. And I just, I just love that. Um, and so during mm -hmm. your time with us, you were part of the original Chief Chat team. So can you kind of talk to us about how the show started and like, well, just the whole process of how it started and how it kind of now, took off. Let, let me rephrase the question. Can you tell us about the the, the blood, sweat, and tears? Because that's, that's what Julie <laughs> and Leah said. The blood, sweat, and tears. Are you crying? Of, 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 <laughs> no. Uh -uh, there's the no grind crying. was real. <laughs> <laughs> the, gr the grind was real. I'm telling you. So I think it was uh, it was probably April. April last year, right? Yeah, April had to be April. Mm -hmm. No, actually, I'm lying. It might have been March. And you remember, Mr. You know, Mr. Ockenfels. So his daughter reaches out to us. This, I think, this is where it first started, uh, or this was where the seed kind of came from. His daughter, mm -hmm. I, I, what was her name? Annalise. Annalise. Yes. I think his daughter's name was. She mm -hmm. reached out to us. Was like, hey, could you be on this show? Uh, um, what is it? Uh, the Jam or something like that in, in Chicago. And I'm like, all right, what, what, what the hell do we have in Chicago? You know what I mean? I'm trying to like tie it in. Like, what do we have in Chicago? Um, I noticed some Navy, I think Naval installations there or some sort, um, but she wanted us to be on and it was like something having to do with mental health. And I was like, whoa, I am not a mental health expert. I think you got the wrong guy. And some back and forth, I think Julie's on the emails. No, 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 no. We just want you to know, you know, tying the exchange of what you do for the service members and all that. We'll tie it into mental health. So I was like, whatever, let's do it. Right. So fast forward, I, I think it was like the beginning of April. You know, we do the show. It goes off great, uh, great show online. And then something behind the scenes, I, I, I don't know who it was. Somebody comes up, well, let's do a COVID update. That was the first interview. Mm -hmm. Yes. It was a COVID update. And that was like a week later. So we're trying to figure out this Zoom thing. I think we use Zoom. <laughs> and don't get me started with the whole Zoom for government or Zoom. <laughs> oh my God. Jesus. It took I'm IT like 10 flashbacks. years to figure that out. Remember that? <laughs> Hey, IT probably mad right now listening, but hey, man, took y'all forever. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, it, it, it took some time. So I think we're using Zoom. Um, at that time, we just, we're just using it. Uh, you know, we didn't think nothing of it. We do it. And then behind the scenes, we do the interview. It turns out great. We're just talking about COVID, what we're doing to take care of the, the customers, what the associates are doing, you know, to, to stay hygienic, make sure they're providing a proper sanitized area for a customer to shop. Uh, especially with the food, you know, how we're doing social distancing, dining in, dining out. It was all, all about that. The stuff there, some of them are still doing to this day. Mm -hmm. um, so it was a challenging time because, you know, we just wanted our customers to know this is what the exchange is doing to take care of you and, and ensure you're able to come shop at, in a safe environment. So we do that. Fast forward. Um, I don't know, Judd, Judd Ancy, your boss, right? The SVP, Senior uh -huh. Vice President. For those that don't know, Senior Vice President is like a one-star equivalent at the exchange, right? So one-star equivalent. Uh, so the senior vice president, I, don't know, I guess he, got, he does something behind the scenes and he gets a hold of a Kevin. Kevin, uh, what was his last name? Phelan. Phelan? Fallon. That's it. So Kevin Fallon, right? And next thing you know, he's like, oh, I know some famous people. And he hooks us up with like Max Martini, Taya Kai, remember? Uh -huh. He hooked us yeah, up uh -huh. with a bunch of people. And, and if I recall, he did very good at hiding his rank. I think he was an officer in the Navy. So big yeah. shout out to Kevin uh, and, and to the Navy, thank you for, you know, supporting the exchange and hooking us up with a lot of those stars who in turn hooked us up with a lot more guests to come mm -hmm. on the show. I think, um, cause remember Taya, we got Tay on cause Hamid and Taya called on, who was it? Um, famous dude, famous dude, they did a movie on him. Oh, Mark uh, Marcus, Marcus, Marcus Luttrell. Luttrell. Marcus Luttrell. <laughs> Marcus Luttrell. So it, it, it it kind of kept going. So mm -hmm. I think Judd, I don't know how he knew him. Somebody reached out to him or, or something, kind of got that going. So behind the scenes, you know, we're working it. We're, 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 we're sending out emails. We're, we're trying to find, you know, we, we got a guest here, Max Martini, good dude. He was in, uh, I think for most of you that don't know, he was in Pacific Rim, I think yeah. Captain Phillips, mm -hmm. Saving mm -hmm. Private Ryan. 
real good dude. He actually did. Um, mm-hmm. He actually did. Um, what was it? Uh, a pre. A pre Zoom meeting with us to make sure he, it worked. He did. Uh-huh, You're he right. Did. I forgot about that because we had never done it with another person, and so we were kind of trying to figure out like, how is this going to work? You're, I completely forgot that he did that. That yes. pre, and we, I was like, well, how is this? I don't know what to say to this guy. Like, how is this going to work? And it was great. And then the next day it went off just fine. Um, yeah. I think that was the first time that Julie was like, I'm so nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Judy says that about all. I do. No, I Julie, do. Julie never says that at all, ever. <laughs> but I think, I think the really cool thing was that we, we initially thought we're going to maybe once a week update customers on what we're doing uh, to protect you in our stores and make it a safe and secure environment. And it would just be the three of us giving an update and letting people know what was going on at their exchanges. Um, but then it, it was like in a matter of just days, it, it kind of exploded really, really quickly. Right. And we already had guests lined up for, a couple of weeks. Um, and so then it got to a point where we were like, we had more guests than dates available even. Right. Yeah, and so then exactly. we're like, what do we do? And some days we, I mean, some weeks we were having three shows a week just to squeeze people in when they were available. So it, what started as this little, like, let's update people on what's going on came into this way bigger thing that we ever imagined. I mean, that I ever imagined it would Same. be. And I think my favorite though, was when we were getting ready to go live and Chief's like, um, some guy named Aaron Rodgers can do the show on June 3rd. <laughs> <laughs> and literally, literally, and I are like, I'm the, sorry, if I were like, some guy named Aaron Rodgers, I guess he plays football. And we, we're like, that would be a yes. We're going to say yes to Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> I forget, yeah, for, for those that don't know, I know nothing about sports. And I a lot of these sports people. So I, I yeah, that was, I was like, Aaron Rodgers? I don't know, some guy named Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> and they're all like, what? The Aaron Rodgers? I remember that you said the Aaron Rodgers. And I was like, I don't know Aaron Rodgers. Like, is he good? Like, I don't know, football player? And yeah. she's like, yeah, like, yeah, book him. I was like, all right, then. And I think that was the, the struggle back then was just booking people, right? And, and of course, having a mix of, of, of entertainment and information, yep. right? Yeah. And, and I, I think that what really set it off, right, Max Martini was good. And I think at that same time, I'm not sure we had Mark Wahlberg in yet. And shout out to MD, right, Anna Middleton and them and Mark Dowd, or Tom Dowd, not Mark Dowd, sorry, Tom, Tom Dowd. Dowd. Tom Dowd. Right. He was the one that hooked us up with, with Mark at first. Yes, it was uh, about, it was this week last year. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so they kind of set that up. And once you throw, let me tell you, once you say like, oh, Mark Wahlberg's on the show. Oh, Aaron Rodgers is on the show. Oh, we got, you know, The Rock. You guys, P. Diddy. Who the hell, man, who's going to say no? <laughs> like, who's going to, like, what? You want me, you want me? Like, I feel, I feel like royalty right now coming back on the show. After you've had <laughs> oh, all these oh right? Chief, that's so you know? nice. Like, look at that. I feel, I'm telling you guys have, this is a grade A show. I, I mean, you look at Jimmy Kimmel, Trevor Noah, you have the same, you have the same guests as they do. Yeah, no. It's Keeping the, it real, except the, the, you know, the special thing is, right, it ties into the military. Yeah. That's, that's the key. Um, no. So just so just kind of feel it from from my perspective, right? I'm I'm getting uh I'm inter- getting interviewed for the job, uh, and I, I got interviewed before COVID, right? And so I got the job and everything else. COVID happens. You guys start this podcast. I I'm not a podcast. I I never jump on front of the <laughs> camera, right? And there and then so I'm trying to like watch you and watch you guys and see how y'all guys are, like interact with each other, whatever. And then. We got Mark Wahlberg. I'm like, whoa, crap. Like, y'all got Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> y'all got Aaron Rodgers. Y'all got Gronkowski. I'm like, man, they got some heavy hitters. And I'm, and I'm thinking, like, how am I going to just integrate myself into that? Like, I felt like, and I said this on another show, I felt like the uh, the, the new Aunt Viv, right? Because <laughs> <laughs> you, you're the original Aunt Viv, and everybody loves the original Aunt Viv. But then the new Aunt Viv was like, who is this new Aunt Viv? Like, what's going on? So, so it was just, for me, I'm just like, OK. First, I got to figure out how not to make myself look like an idiot on camera. And now I got to, you know, be able to talk to Diddy or talk to Rock or we had, you know, Matthew McConaughey, Garth Brooks. Like it was just a bunch of like big heavy hitters. And so, uh, you know what I'm saying? You, you guys set up something that's magical, to be honest with you. 
and I'm just glad that I got. Hey, hey, did it. you and did you end up Magnum PI like compete mustaches? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I mean, listen, he's my inspiration when it comes to mustaches. So, uh, yeah, I, I haven't. I only started growing a mustache at like 17, 18, probably eight, probably more like 19. I thought I had one in 18, but it really wasn't a mustache. But ever since I, I've never let it go. So thank you, Megan. So let me mention one more thing, right? So a lot of, a lot, a lot of things that people don't see, right? Is the behind the scenes. Like, oh yeah. I mean, you think, right? You see this, oh, you're on Zoom easy. You click the button, everybody comes in. No, there is a lot to deal with, especially with some stars, you gotta deal with their handlers. You know, some are responsive, some ain't. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's like last minute. Like, oh, here you go. Here's everything. Many, like, what? Man, like tomorrow. <laughs> how many you know, times so, were we like, minute. it's it's time to be on? Are they going to join? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, and Julie, you know, Julie be be stressed. <laughs> oh my God, where are they? Where are they? Ten fifty nine right now. Ten fifty nine shows at eleven. Where are they? And you're like, Thank no, you Julie. For me. Dude, chill, Julie chill. Impression. They're, they're gonna come on. Don't worry. There's probably some technical difficulty. I remember sometimes, one, one or two times, we had to come on and kind of chit chat, but be, be, before yes. the show starts. Yes, before yes. the guests yeah. arrive. Like, okay, they're gonna be here any second, and we're just gonna go. So yeah, but there's a lot of work. A lot of people don't. There's a lot of work behind the scenes. You know, writing the script. Uh, you know, questions that, that uh, to be honest, right? Questions that can and can't be asked. Right? What's off limits? Uh, you have to ask these people that because I, I might mention something off the cuff. Uh, and piss someone off. And I you don't say. Say. You don't yeah. say. Yeah. I heard about. I heard about that one too. <laughs> yeah. Left right limits, right? They don't tell you the left right limits, and I don't know. I'm just gonna assume it's cool. Um, so you just got to be careful. You know, kind of getting that feedback from what's allowed, what's not allowed. Asking all those questions with the handlers, making sure you know everything's on point. What they, what do they want to talk about? Integrating that into the conversation and making sure it's relevant for the you know the, the customer, the viewer. Um, and that, that's what's important. It's so many things. And I think, I remember, I think one of the sections did, uh, Hey, whoever could bring on guests, I don't know, you win a prize or something like that. And I think we did, think, we did that yeah. in our, within yeah. our own team. Yep. Yeah. I remember, I think Paula, she works down. Um, she got us, uh, um, Mark Wahlberg's brother, um, Paul, Paul, Paul Wahlberg. Yep. Paul. Rina yeah, she got us. helped us get Paul. Yep. Yeah. So a lot of people from the exchange also, you know, through their contacts helped us get a lot of guests like, oh, I know this person. All right. And I actually heard, and I don't know, I'm, I'm going to drop this now. I ain't going to drop no names. Oh, no. I, I heard Does that you guys delay? are going to have, and you you correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> I heard you're going to have your first billionaire on the show soon. You're not wrong. Yeah. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. Stay tuned billionaire, for sir. June. Everybody listening, the first billionaire on the show. It's big time <laughs> name. And, and let me, let me go back to, I'm, I'll just tell you how some of these interviews happen. Sometimes it's cold calling. Yeah. And that's probably the scariest thing, right? Because you're just like cold calling people. Hey, you know, here we are at the exchange. You know, we'd love to have you on the show. And who the hell are you? What's the exchange, right? That's the first mm -hmm. thoughts are a lot of these people. Who are you? Then once you tell them, then you say some of the names. That kind of helps. Like, oh, okay, hold on. You got these people on the show. Uh, but that's probably one of the most scariest or, you know, sending emails, trying to get guests and probably one of the toughest uh, parts, right, of it. It's like, you know, how do we keep, you know, keep our guest list, you know, with the right mix of, of entertainment versus information so our customer tunes in and, and kind of gets that good mix of military. You know, what, what are military leaders saying today? I mean, you had a SEAC on. You had, you had Chief Master on the Air Force, right? Sergeant Major Army. You had, uh, uh, um, I just saw you with a Space recent general Force. on there. I can't remember. Yeah. The team Space, Force. Space Force, yeah, absolutely. Right. But you the know, cool, so the, if you're having some of these leaders, yeah. The cool thing is, 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 is the folks that we get on the show, um, you know, we don't pay for it, and and they're they're just really want want to show some love to the military, right? Mm -hmm. And so we just go out there and 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 we we uh, let them know what we're all about and and what who who we had and all that other stuff. But um, they just really come on because they got some you know passion or love for for what we do. Uh, so I appreciate that. Absolutely. And so, and people, so many great KO, memories. To your point, Go ahead, Chief. People, people don't know KO about the, you know, like appearance fees. We don't pay appearance fees. To get some of these people on, you're talking about 150 grand just for them to show up. Yeah. People yeah. think that's a joke. It is not a joke. Nope. Go online so our... and try to... Am I cutting up or is that you? Who, who no, up? you're good. Is it me? You're no, good. you're good, Chief. 
No, but uh, I mean, you could go online and try to hire, you know, hire an actor to come to your house. See how much it costs. Let us know. Mm -hmm. But to KO's point, they don't charge us. It's free. They do this out of love for the military and they want to be on to talk to all of you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so many great memories, Chief, over the last year. Um, do you have a favorite guest or what about a favorite co-host? Don't tell hey, Julie that I asked. Don't tell, don't me tell Julie don't that, tell that I asked that. <laughs> it's me. It's okay. We don't need to hurt her feelings. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right, it's all right. It's all right Chief. It's okay. It's okay. You're both, you're both the best. You're both the best. So, favorite. Cop out. What yeah. do you say? Favorite. <laughs> Both the best. Both. <laughs> hey, don't do it. Yeah, don't. Yeah, don't follow. Don't follow. The step, I know. I'm. I'm gonna keep that. I'm gonna go to the question. You said my favorite memory. Guest. Who was your favorite guest or favorite? Ooh, they're all different. They're the all show. different. You know, because sometimes we had to come on. Remember, we had Tommy Lee on, and I, I didn't even know who Tommy Lee was. I was like, who the hell is Tommy Lee? They're like, <laughs> they were like some group. What was the name of that group? The the Motley, Motley Crew. Crew. Motley yeah. Crew. Yeah, Motley Crew. So I had to go watch a movie on Netflix to at least learn something about it, right? I was like, all right, let me look this up. You know, like, you know. Shout out to Jamie Roberts for that because she brought us so many great guests too. She Jamie did. Roberts yeah. did bring us. And you know, one thing, one one group you should bring back because this was a memory. It's on my list and it's not a good memory. The Islanders. You need to do that one again. We need to do that. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> we do. They were, they were really good sports. I think our live feed cut four times. Um, yeah, talk so about were, that. Were, blood, were, sweat, and tears. <laughs> That's before we had some the technical stuff kind of figured out. They were terrific, terrific sports and really good guests. Good point, Chief. Yeah, that, that was a memory. I was like, oh my God, how many times is this going to turn off? I don't know who's, it was just, <laughs> it was just the initial, it was just the initial, you know, figuring out Zoom, how, how it works. You know. I thought I was getting fired that day. <laughs> oh, that was a, yeah, that was a bad day. I remember that. Oof, I was like, it's, it's kind of what's going on? And we kept coming back and they had so many, they had like a bunch of viewers too. Like they were into it. And then, you know, once it cuts out, you lose all of them. And mm -hmm. They were interesting I, looking, right? One of them had hair and then there was like face paint. So like the visual, like you would be like, what the heck is this? You wanted to tune in and see, and then the feed would die. So that was, yeah, yeah that we was a memory that. for sure. Them again. That was a memory. <laughs> um, how about, um, remember when our first interview with Mark Wahlberg, right before, I was like, hey, Mark, hey man, I want to ask you something. And he was like, <laughs> yeah, go ahead. And I was like, and then Julie goes, oh, we're live. And I was like, oh, no, man, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait till after, till after the, the show. He was like, no, I'm going to ask me right now. And I was like, shit, man, we're live. You know what I mean? <laughs> I was like, hey, I, know you, um, I know you know Mario Lopez. Uh, I was like, you mind, you mind hooking us up for him as a guest? He's like, yeah, hold on, man. He pulls out his phone. You remember this on the air? Hey, Mario, how you doing? Blah, blah, blah. He's like, hey, look, say hi. And he shows us something. Hey, you mind? <laughs> He's like, yeah, man, send him the info. And like, what, two weeks later, Leah, Julie, I don't remember, two weeks yep. later, you had him Yeah. Then go to Mario. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody would go there with me on that. Nobody. I, I Like, that's, yes. But yes, we had him on May 5th. That's how yeah. I remembered. That was hilarious. But that was a memory. Um, oh, remember when I called the Gronk? Grank? Yes. The, the, he called him Grank? <laughs> hey, Grank. He was like, Grank. I was like, oh, shit. I think he got a little mad. I think he got a little mad. He kind of said something like, oh, I'm going to call you Fuis or something. I don't know, some stupid thing he said. It was something crazy. And I was like, oh, he's the mad. Green. Oh, no, man, the oh my God, that is hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I, I called him the, the Grank. Uh, it was kind of funny. I mean, it wasn't intentional, obviously. It was like the end of the show, too. Like, at the end of the show, I called him the Grank. So I was like, oh, I messed that oh. up. And another one, the magic trick. Remember the magic trick? They were, that was so good. I loved that episode. No, Be Bruce. Becker Magic. They were so wonderful. Yo, and that thing in the back, like, how did he know we were going to pick Tom Cruise and the car? And it was during the whole time. Like, I'm still, I'm still kind of like, how the hell did they do that? Like, it's, and I do magic sometimes. Like, That's a pretty good trick, you know. It, and it was good. Yeah, we learned on that show that Chief oh, Reyes okay. does magic also. Oh, really? <laughs> Yeah, yes. yeah. I, I didn't know that. I, I do. I do. I've been doing magic here. I've been doing magic here across the base. Sometimes, you know, we'll have our uh, our mentorship sessions on Fridays, like at three, four, and you know, we'll hang out and we'll do some magic tricks and, and mess around. And, well, you well, you had to do a magic fun. trick to get me hired for this position, so, so I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> oh, you deserved it, man. You nah, deserved it's it. all good. Man. You deserved it. You know so, what I mean? So can you can you tell us like who do you wish you had gotten a chance to talk with or, or somebody that you uh would like to see us host next uh in year two of Chief Chat? I mean, there's so many people. Um I think there's a couple of people that I was working on that I forgot to, you know, I just didn't have time to get on there. But I remember Octavia Spencer. Remember we were working on that? Mm -hmm. Um Julie. So it's sure. funny that you mentioned her. I just like if if her PR people are watching, I just sent you an email last night. So hey, we'd love to have you. Absolutely. <laughs> she was supposed to come on a year ago. But you know, we'll hook it up. I think she would be great. Uh, I just saw, you know, and the reason it came to me, because I was watching uh Thunder Force. <laughs> yeah, <she> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so she she reminded me on there. Uh, you know what else would be cool? Um kind of crazy so a lot of a lot of things and it might be controversial i don't know how some people feel about it i think you should have dave ramsey on your show i know he hates ah. credit and i know the military star card but it, it kind of brings that <laughs> <laughs> responsible <laughs> credit wow, chief. Yeah. responsible he hates credit cards like it don't matter if you're getting 500 500 uh, percent cash back on your credit card he's like don't get it it's stupid use your debit card i'm like i, I get it i get the philosophy but I think it's great because, you know, um, just, just the points that he brings up about finance, you know, budgeting and all that. I think it'll help a lot of, you know, a lot of our viewers, a lot of service members out there who might be watching. And it's kind of a different viewpoint, right? Um, and it's good, right? It's just good, good, healthy debate. Good, healthy debate. Um, but I think he would be kind of cool to have on. Of course, you could, KO knows them all. Any MAGCOM, Command Chief or MACOM for the Army, uh, 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 Command Sergeant Major, that could come on and and kind of talk about their mission and what they're doing, you know, to support the fight, you know, for America. I think any of those personnel famous, I think it'll be cool if you were interview interviewers, like if you could get Trevor Noah on or Jimmy Kimmel or one of those, one of those uh, 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 personnel on here. Um, I think that'll be kind of cool to interview an interviewer, people who are actually interviewing famous people like you guys are. Yeah. That'll be yeah. kind of cool. I mean, I, love got, you know, that. I mean, I think, I don't know how you would get them, but I, I mean, we did John Stewart that one time. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, yeah but he was retired. I think for a while. Yeah, and uh -huh. and every pet that John Stewart ever had in life came came, <laughs> came throughout the show. I think a pair. I think a pair of flew by. I think a pair of flew by. <laughs> <laughs> but he had that <laughs> sort of like a hurricane. <laughs> they had had a hurricane that week or something, right? Was it a hurricane? Yeah, some tropical yeah. storm blew through, no. so his internet connection was like not great. <laughs> and I was so nervous the whole time. I'm like, we're gonna lose him. And then he's got these dogs running all over the place <laughs> and he's talking to us from his phone like this. And <laughs> it was, I uh, yeah, that was a very, it was good. But he didn't cancel. Stressful. He didn't no, cancel. He honest, did not. So Kudos to him. He did not, he did not cancel. Absolutely. He did it. He did not cancel. He followed he did through. Not. I mean, there's just there's just so many, you know, uh, famous people. Another another maybe one of those, you know, great books you always see running around. Uh, Simon Sinek, you know, author, yeah. leadership author. Yeah. Or, or John Maxwell. I think that would nice. tie in great to the oh, yeah, military. Would, you know, our, that would tie in great to the military, John. Yeah, because we we always doing all kind of seminars, Maxwell uh, seminars. I think that'll be yeah. I think that'll be great. Uh, guests to have on here. Some of the cool things, um, you know what I mean? And I think I'll, I'll talk about that later. We'll see if it comes right. up. But I think those are some of the guests that you you should, or you, you should look into having up. But like like we said earlier, it's hard, man. Unless somebody, hey, if somebody's watching, you know, some of these people, hey, send, send, put it in the comments, man. We'll reach out and we'll get a hold of them. But if you know them even better, because getting in, that's probably the hardest part is getting in. You know, a lot of people think we're, you know, you're scammers, right? You're sending a random email. Who are these guys? You know? <laughs> so it just kind of comes across as, as, as I don't know who they are. So if, you, if we have an in, it's even better. Uh, Absolutely. Everybody watching, if you could help out, if you know somebody famous, you'd like to see them on the air, hey, let Chief Osby know. You can send him a message right there. Hit, hit message and he'll, he'll reply. Absolutely. You bring up a great point. This is the military community show. This is their show. So why does, why does a show like this matter? What does it mean to the community? So to, to be fair, I think what it means to the community, I mean, this is an opportunity. I think some of the best opportunities come up and I kind of mentioned it earlier, right? So you see a lot of these people, um, you see a lot of them on the air, on networks, and they, they never talk about the military, right? Because that's not the, the focus of that demographic, right? The demographic is America, the 330 million Americans. On this show, we get to target the military and what that means to them. So for our audience, 
they get to hear from maybe someone, you know, they idolize or someone they've always wanted to hear speak uh, on matters, particularly to the military. They get to hear that from us. And some of the cool things um, that we've done, that you've done, KO, right, is, is our customers get a chance to interact with our guests. Absolutely. Right? Whether you were at Canon and you brought up, what, five, six people to talk to Garth Brooks? Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Like, they would never get that chance. Try to call Jimmy Kimmel, one of them people, or Trevor Noah. Hey, can I be on the air to say hi? Hell no, nah, get out of here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know what or, I mean? or, or when they comment, we'll, we'll, we'll say a comment and they'll be mm-hmm. like, hey, can you say happy birthday to such and such? And that, you know, their favorite person will, will say happy birthday to their kid or their brother or whatever the case may be. So Or answer uh, questions specific ab- to absolutely. that person, right? Like, hey, what's a question you have for, for you know, uh, uh, this actor or this military leader? Um, and, you know, they kind of get that, it's that closeness, right? That connection, like, hey, I'm right here. They're going to read it. They're going to see this. And, and to be fair to all those watching, it's really tough to kind of scroll through the comments when the comments are scrolling. It's tough to catch up. So we try to go back and, and see, mm-hmm. oh, that's a good question. Let's write it down and we'll ask it. But, you know, you, you get that almost that one-on-one, right? Like you're talking to the guest. Yeah. Even though we're the mediators, right? You're the mediators of the show. You're still talking to that guest. And that makes them feel special. Um, um, and it matters. Right? It, it, it just it just matters a whole lot to our customer that we're doing this. You know, the pandemic um, slowly but surely. There's still people working from home, so there's probably people at home watching this right now. So this is a chance to kind of take a break, tune in, see what's going on, what new news. Like right, right. What new news is coming on? Like billionaire, first time billionaire coming <laughs> on Chief Chat. Absolutely, billionaire. You could take. A we have a doctor that coming too. Oh, a, do- a big time doctor. Yeah, Ooh. he didn't. I wonder if it's Doctor Oz. Oh, <laughs> tune in next I don't week. Know. Ooh, I don't know who it is. So I mean, it's just great. The, the you know some of the. Um, I think we one of our guests, if you remember, who was it? Uh, not Marcus the Trump. Thinking the wrong. Uh, who we played for New Orleans Saints. Remember, I, and I don't know if this was on the air, but he gave him tickets to come watch a game. Oh, Lata- game. Latavius. Remember Murray. that KO? You were there. Yeah. Yeah, uh-huh. Latavius Murray. Latavius, yeah. Latavius Murray. I wonder if that ever happened. I'm going to have to email him and say, hey, man, you get your tickets. <laughs> I, <laughs> I got to follow up with that. But that's something that would never happen, right? Those are some of the things that would never happen. You know, young kid, I think he was Army Army uh, Sergeant, right? Yeah, army he was sergeant. Army Sergeant yes. down, down in uh, San Antonio. Yeah, down in San Antonio. He's I've never been to a game, but I love you, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, Murphy was like, hey, man, I got you, man. You got tickets. Hook it up. And so, you know, we connected him, and hopefully he got a chance to go to his game. So little things like that that we, you know, we were able to do behind the scenes bring joy. I mean, you look, KO, you saw the people when they wanted to, how excited are they when they were talking to, get a chance to talk to Garth Brooks? Oh, man, it was, it, it, was, it was amazing. Like I said, a lot of them were raised on Garth Brooks. A lot of them were really young and uh, their parents were raised on them. So I, I could just imagine mom tuning in and watching daughter talk about, hey, you know, my mom used to play you, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, well, tell your mother I said such and such. And so, man, it, you, you'll, you'll remember that for the rest of your life. Yeah, and I think those are some and of the, the rock. You know, and the rock, the rock, like, the rock went into character for for uh, one of our kids. He would, he oh, went in, oh yeah, he sung the song and all kind of other stuff, man. It's just you know the, those type of things. The, the fact that we're able to create that that atmosphere for people, man, it's just you know that that lets me know we're doing the right thing. That's why, and that's why Chief Chat matters. Yep. Mm. Well, Chief and Chief, both of you Chiefs, you have a lot of fans out in Facebook land. So <laughs> just want to take a second and look at the live feed. Lots of people saying hi. Um, Jason Gargan, Chief Reyes, I think you know him. He said, um, hello. Also, hello again, ladies. I joined you for the the Gronk chat, he says. Who's that? Oh, uh, you, yes. Jason I Gargan. totally remember him. Hi. He's hardcore. Hardcore. Bobby Man, Farnan cool. says, this is one high energy Chief Master Sergeant. <laughs> That's right. Let's do it. <laughs> Lisa Christie is watching and she says, good Aww. to see you again, Chief Reyes. Lisa, Lily that was an old, hey, that was Mr. Scholes. That was Mr. Scholes, old admin. She's the best. Lisa, I love you. Miss you. Jonathan Parker says, Chief Reyes is the man. Oh, Parker. How's he doing? He, I think he just moved. Didn't he just, I think he just sold his house and moved. I've been following him on the internet. I've been watching, keeping up with him. So hey, thanks a lot, Parker. <laughs> Ponda Bishop, Philanda Morgan, they're both watching, saying hi. Um, 
Mark Jenkins. <laughs> Mark Jenkins has been um, leaving quite a few comments. So I think he either knows both of you or one of you, yeah, but he guy. says the two goats, if we can get Lil Boozy, y'all getting gold jackets. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means. Jake, Jake, well, he, he's, he's, a, he's a rapper. So, yeah. We got oh, okay. hey, we to work on our rap. We got to get our rappers on, on the show. You got a little baby? Hey, little baby up in here? Little baby? Little baby? <laughs> <laughs> you, might have, you might have son. Ed Shabazz says, hey, Chief, love this. Miss your face at the Express shows. Oh. And then I just want to turn to the Chief page two. Sergeant Barry says hi to both Chiefs. Um, What's going on, Sergeant Barry? Barry, hey Barry, hey Barry, been working out every Monday for oh, yeah. for Fit Monday, right? Yes, y'all, y'all tune in yes. to Be Fit Mondays if you want. If, if you, for me, I look at it and I'm like, man, I am so out of shape, <laughs> and so I'll catch the like the last five minutes and do like the last five minutes, but but everything else I just watch. So thank you, Sergeant Barry and uh and Roy. Jay well Jay Will says hi and Rob Wilkins. So he's a past guest and he's tuning in. He says, Chief Reyes, thanks for the positive impact you have on our Air Force. With your dynamic personality, you should consider a talk show host for your next gig. Talk to you soon. Ooh. Aim high. Ooh. Hey, man. Ooh. Hey, you, 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 Ooh, you got, know about you got a portfolio now, Lewis. So you yeah. <laughs> know. Hey, I'm gonna have I'm gonna type up a resume. I'm gonna type up oh. <laughs> LinkedIn, hey, man. Yo. Hey, Sergeant Barry, in. Sergeant Barry is challenging you to one BFIT live workout, Chief Reyes. Let's do it. I can do it. Easy. And then Easy. we'll make it happen. We'll make it happen. We have um, our favorite Chief um, Sergeant H has been watching. So he's oh, saying Sergeant hi. H. And he's he said that he did magic tricks with you before, Chief. Hmm. We did. In the office, we did magic tricks. <laughs> <laughs> wow so okay. chief and sergeant h doing magic did, did, and you, then cut, Matt, did you cut sergeant h in half or what man wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> pull, him, pull him out of a hat <laughs> my next trick <laughs> gosh and then last one matt Beatty says chief still trying to get to see the aliens at area 51 <laughs> He was supposed to set that up for me. He never did. <laughs> well, he's still he, trying for you. He did. He did hook me up with a Circuit of Soleil show, though. It was oh, cool. well, thanks. Awesome. Was Good nice. job, was Matt. Very, very nice. Very, and I didn't lose all my money in Vegas. Even, <laughs> that's even better. That's a good thing. <laughs> that in itself is magic. That's fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Chief, before we wrap up, is there anything else you want the military community to know about the exchange benefit and why the exchange matters? Oh, come on. You know, you got to take advantage of it, right? It's there. Uh, it's there for you. You know, it's there to support you. Um, if you look at the exchange vision, right? Uh, I think the exchange vision is to be the preferred retailer and, and services for the military community, right? Something like that to provide the preferred retail. Hold on, I got it written down somewhere. Let me find it. <laughs> I got it written down somewhere. Hold on. What is it? Exact. Here it is. To be the, uh, to be the preferred retail and services provider for the military family. Right. And what does that mean? That means give the exchange a shot. Right. You think you think the exchange people don't know when you're running through the BX that you're on your phone at Amazon.com looking up to see what price is better. Yeah, we, we know that. Like, like they, they know all that. That's not a secret. But we appreciate you coming to the exchange first to check it out. Right. Because I'm not going to blame you. I'll keep it real. If it's cheaper somewhere else. I mean, who could blame you? Who could fault you for going somewhere else? Right. But remember, the exchange does price match. So <laughs> yep. get out there. If you have it on Amazon, you look at it. Hey, they price match this. They'll price match it. Or if you're looking at your local Walmart online app or Target, any of those stores, any of those you know, retail stores, and, and, and you see it at a cheaper, more affordable price, they will price match it. Um, but if not, stop by the exchange. Give them, give them a chance. And I think that's, that's all we could hope for, right? Let, us, let the exchange win your business. And, and you know, if we lose, we lose. It happens, right? You can't win everywhere. That's just that's just the way life is. But if we can't win in some places, you know, stop by the BX before you go home on the way home. Check it out. You know, of course, comparison shop. I'm, we're not telling you not to comparison shop. I think that's very important, especially if you're living on a budget. Take advantage of your tax-free uh, savings. A lot of people kind of forget that. Um, but it, you know, it's tough for like some bases like Dover, where there's no tax off base either. So it's. <laughs> Yeah. The BX has to be very competitive there, but you know, like Texas, Florida, you know, eight percent tax. You're up in New York, high, high, high tax rates. 
you know, take advantage of what the exchange offers you, which is a tax-free benefit. Um, we're there to serve you, right? The exchange is there to take care of the customer. The exchange is there to take all of you family members, retirees, veterans. And I'm going to tell you what the story said. Soon to be some DOD ID card holding civilians. Yeah, so yeah. They'll be able to walk in there, but no alcohol, tobacco. All right, guys. Sorry. That's only for the service members and their families. But everything else is fair game. Um, but, you know, uh, it, it matters. Take, take advantage of that. And for some of the people wondering why, uh, there are a lot of installations like Wright Pat, Redstone Arsenal, where you only have like a thousand military personnel and you have a nice size BX. Um, and it's hard, you know, the only people allowed to shop are those 1,000 when you have, you know, five, 10,000 civilians, DOD civilians. Um, and, you know, they're taking advantage of the MWR services on the installation, but they're not putting no money into it. Why not let them put money into that? So the military can take advantage of those service, you know, take advantage of that and provide more affordable services to the military community. So then to so your point, that's one of the reasons that and then 100% of exchange earnings go back to the military community with about 60% going to uh, quality of life programs, $2.2 .2 billion to those programs in the last 10 years alone. That's right. You saw that setup, guys, out there in the field. You saw that setup? I, Smooth yeah. transition. Right <laughs> <to you. laughs> Absolutely. We know each other. <laughs> and and, and I'm, I'm glad, like I said, I'm glad we had this conversation because it really ties into all the stuff that we are involved in, right? We when we talk about the person that goes downrange to provide a service to our, our folks in the fight. We talk, uh, we got we got kids uh, in the DOD uh, EA schools that are getting fed by APs. So, you know, we're, we're, we're baking bread and bottling water so people can feel safe overseas drinking and eating any. So it's just, it's a lot of things that people, uh, it, me specifically, I didn't know that uh, APs did before I got to this job, man. But uh, it makes me want to go uh, spend my money at APs even more because I know where that money's going. I know what I'm helping, I know is giving back to these communities. And we, we just got a bunch of good partnerships out there uh, with uh, Air Force A Society and Army Emergency Relief. And like all that stuff is just connected to something that I've grown up in for the last 23 years. So you you came in September 97, I came in September 97. So, uh, you know, I've been living, breathing this stuff for the past, you know, 20, 24, almost 24 years. Uh, so I'm definitely going to always uh, contribute to my community. Good point. Good point. And hey, shout out my, my last word. Shout out to all the associates out there doing it big, taking care of the customers. Because let me tell you, I'm going to tell you right now, I wear this uniform. Hey, some of us are crazy customers. Oh, yeah. I, it don't matter the rank. You could be an officer, high ranking enlisted, hey, hey, not just airmen, not just young soldiers. I'm talking about some of us are crazy when it comes <laughs> to, to, to just just being a good customer. So thank you to all the associates out there that have to deal with us sometimes, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> they have to deal with us. But the majority of us are great customers. Uh, they are just a few oddballs here and there. But thank you for all you do uh, uh, for the service members and, of course, their families, their retirees, veterans, and, of course, all these new civilians that hopefully will be coming out, hopefully, until the official notice is out, according to Julie, you know what I mean? <laughs> that we'll be shopping out of the store. Miss so thank PA. you. Oh, yeah. you do. Keep well, it up. I, yeah, Miss PA, keeping me on track. Very rulesy. Very, very rulesy. Yeah. So I'm getting my job. Yeah. He is rulesy. I always, I hey, do you remember the email I sent her? I was like, why is, I think I sent it to Lee. I said, why is, why is Julie being so damn bureaucratic? Oh my God. It's just Julie. Julie. She wants to ask for permission for like every little thing. Yeah, this <laughs> You guys were talking about me behind my back. Yeah. No, oh, you, you were probably on the email. You were probably yeah. on the email. <laughs> you know, right. Yes, he's going to tell you. Yes. I'm a little I'm like, rosy. Geez. I'm like, geez, why is she so bureaucratic? Like, <laughs> I like rules. That's why. That's, Re yes, Reyes gets rules. information and he loves to share. So he yeah. gets it and yes. he goes. I yeah. go. I know. Yeah. I, can't, I want to say the name so bad, but I'm not. Just billionaire. there. It's gonna be dope. And I'll say this, hey, you gotta bring up Bitcoin. You gotta bring it up. Bitcoin. Gotcha. You gotta talk. Bitcoin. You gotta talk. Bitcoin. Right. Bitcoin. Okay. Are making notes now. That might, hey, that might, that might give I know some people are probably wondering, like, who is this billionaire? But when I said Bitcoin, it's gonna narrow it down to a few. Yeah. So you, Bitcoin. You can probably, I think it's no, up on I'm our hub page, it. isn't it, Leah? It's on our yes, hub. Yeah. It's not a mm -hmm. secret. You can mm -hmm. share who it is yeah. if oh. you want to. Oh, go ahead. Share. I, I was go ahead. Share it. Who is it? Who is oh. it? So he's the owner of who? Who he's the owner of? He's the owner of the Dallas Mavericks. We got Mark Cuban on the show coming up <laughs> soon, man. So uh, Shark Tank and and now he's he's accepting Dogecoin at his at his at his uh games as well. So 
yeah, it's it's gonna be a good conversation, man. Mark Cuban is is a definitely a fun guy. You can just tell uh, he's very passionate about his Mavs, uh, and and also just a brilliant uh, businessman. So uh, we Mark we, Jenkins guessed it. He guessed it in the did comments. He, did he guess so. it? Yes, he That's did. Talk about twin. That's my twin out there. I, he I did say twin. that he was your twin. Yeah, Twins. Yeah. We, um, we look, we look, we look alike and don't look alike all at the same time. It's, it's weird. So. <laughs> you I'm gotta, trying you know, to Mark, find us. <laughs> Mark's gonna tune in. Mark's gonna tune in for Mark Cuban. That's gonna be hey. That's gonna be a nice convo right there. Oh, Tech Sergeant Rodriguez on now. She says uh, hi, Chief Reyes. Oh, Rodriguez. <laughs> Rod Rodriguez. She, yeah. She was on the uh, uh, the Rock, Rock interview. Mm -hmm. ah, yeah. Yes, and, and how she, could you beat that? Right, being on with the Rock, like how could you beat that? Come on, absolutely. And she is like a best friend of Chief Chat. She's on every single one. Oh, but what, I also wanted that? to tell you um, that Colonel Day Day has been watching, and she's been saying hi and commenting. And so I'm sorry that I didn't get to read your comments, but I wanted to tell you chief that she says, oh, hi. Awesome, awesome. I didn't get a chance. I got a chance to work with her. She just got there. Um, uh, when I got there, I wish I could have worked. More how, with how do her. folks get the she's top fan? You remember, her. you know, the top fan thing, uh, from, from in Facebook or something, <laughs> like how can we start giving diamonds to our, 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 our loyal viewers, yeah. man, we got to figure yeah. that out. So my favorite comment hey, comes from Mark. Hey, send him a gift card. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, rules. You cannot do that. Rules. Barbara, Barbara is my card. favorite commenter. She says, I like rules as well. You know where you stand. So Barbara, if I could, I would give you a gift card, but that's not in the rules. <laughs> hey, you got any, hey, hold up. You got any coupons for anyone watching? No, I don't. I don't have any coupons. Listen, I have no discount. So I have antsy nothing. right now. I think KO. Oh hey, I think, gosh. hey, guys. I think I think Tao I think Ko got some stuff. I think Ko got some coupons. I don't know. He's trying to hide them. I don't know. Mm. Listen, oh, he's listen, I got back. virtual. Cheap I got uh, OSB. All I got Take is a good chat. personality. Type cheap chat in the not... discount code. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm joking, everyone. Do not type cheap chat. You're not gonna get a discount. It's a joke. Please. please. <laughs> Have you met oh Reyes before? You see how Reyes? You see how Reyes is? <laughs> you see how Reyes is like kicking his ant bed, and now I'm gonna get all these DMs. <laughs> Uh, people asking for stuff. For that the I can't even code. Thank, thank you, Chief no Reyes. Code. I appreciate it. There's, an, there's no code. There's no code. <laughs> exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> this is <laughs> live oh, entertainment gosh. is our gift to you. That's what you get. Yeah, and, sure. and tax free you know shopping what? and military pricing. That's what you get. You know what yes. the gift is for those top fans, though, to be honest? The, the best gift that, that, that KO and Yaka give is to have them come on the air when one of their favorite stars are on or something. That's you bring up a good point. point. So if you're a top fan and you have a hookup, come talk to us, us know. and we'll we'll make some magic happen for you. Absolutely. And, and I, they I could bring, wanna... you could bring them on. Yes, them on. exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yes. Yeah. And so for me, I just want to thank all the viewers and that, like this, this wouldn't be a thing if it wasn't for the viewers out there, our exchange family, our folks out there, uh, people that followed me over from Keesler and, and all the other bases. And they found out that we, this is what we're doing. And they, just giving me so much love and support uh you know and ray has already had his following when i got here so i you know i'm thank you for for embracing the 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 other aunt viv and and and, and julie and leah they've been freaking awesome amazing they get out there and they they are doing a whole bunch of stuff behind the scenes so uh, i just kind of walked into this dream team like i said the ferrari i got the ferrari i just got to learn how to drive stick i i'm hopefully it's an automatic <laughs> so 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 it as, hey, as of right quick, now, it's been an question. automatic, man. And I just really, really uh, appreciate it. And, and I appreciate you, um, yeah. Lewis, man. You you laid the foundation for, for a lot of great things at this organization. You bring the energy, man. Nobody forgets who you are uh, after they've encountered you, brother. Uh, and, and, man, you still have conversations uh, to this day. We, and, and I could tell that both of us probably had some 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 alcohol in our system, but we, but we have a good conversation, man, and we just Cheap. catch up and, and chop it up. And it's just good You're stuff, man. You're supposed to say that. Absolutely, absolutely. So, uh, but it, like I said, I appreciate you, man. Thank you for everything that you've uh, you done for uh, AFES and and the Air Force and just in life, brother. And and, and I'm forever like we're, we're wingmen forever, brother. Nah, you're doing a, you're doing it. Keep doing your thing, man. You're, you're, you know, I like to say Sean Applegate was chief 1.0. Then I came in, I was chief 2.0. Now you're here, you're chief 3.0. That's it. So, man. right. We got to make it better for everyone and, and make it, you know, make, just make it better, make the organization better. And that's what you're doing right now. So keep taking care of everyone and, and keep doing it. Hey, I do have a question. Who came up 
And I want to say it's Ryan Smith, but I'm not sure. Who came up with Chief Chat? Leah and Judy would know this. Who was it? it was, was it Ryan it Smith? Was who was me. it? It was it me. Was it you? Yeah. It was me. Yeah. I thought it was Ryan Smith. I saw an email that <laughs> no. said Ryan. I was like, oh, that looks good. Cheap chat. Did he come up with that? He's pretty good with the graphics. He works behind the scenes on the graphics and all that. Some of the graphics. Yeah. Because remember at first we had like two different things. We had tune in tune Tuesday in. or tune in Thursday when we had musical yeah. guests. And then we had chief chat for the informational guests. But then chief chat just caught on so much that we... Abandoned hey, with you, you need to yeah. copy right that because there are a lot of biters out there, man. They're taking, they're taking your style, Kyo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I see a lot of chief chats out there you, in the world, man. Have you seen that? You noticed that? I did, I did, I did. I, I had to that? go back in time. I was like, let me see when the first interview was. Like, when did this come out? I was like, all right, it's all good, though. You know, hey, sometimes, you know, uh, um, what's it called? When somebody's, you know, I ain't gonna say copying your style. But, you know, if the copyright you know, infringement, the trademark yeah, infringement. Uh, it, it's no, when they're mimicking you, it's sort of a form of flattery, oh. right? You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, it's like yeah. Something nice. So it, it's good to see. Keep it up. Y'all are doing great. I'm excited. I might jump on with this Mark Cuban and be like, hey, man, put me on the, next, uh, <laughs> the next Bitcoin. What's going on? He might have some insight. You know, he hangs out with the billionaires and they all stay rich anyway. They all work in the <laughs> so We all know the truth, right? So we, we just got to break in that circle real quick. And maybe he'll give us a, uh, is it Safe Moon? Is that the new one everybody's been talking about? All them crazy uh, Robin Hood uh, investors. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, cool. Keep up the great work. Love y'all all. Miss y'all all to all the associates. Say, say what's up to Mr. Shaw, Judd, Anna, everybody. You know, uh, uh, I was going to say Dave, but Dave's not there anymore. I think it's, uh, it's Jason. Jason. Jason Rod Rosenberg, all the SVPs, you know, uh, Bob. All, all of them, all of them. Tommy Ward out there and, and Star Marla, I can't forget Marla. Marla, overseas, <laughs> everybody's doing great. You know, you got Johnny, Ronnie, Johnny. You got, you Jesse, got the Sergeant Major, Sergeant Major Henry, Sergeant Major Crudo. Sergeant Major Henry. Sergeant uh, <laughs> Major Henry. I like Sergeant mm, Major Henry. Oh, me so, too. <laughs> wish all of you, all the associates, of course, Leah, Julie, my, my favorites. There we go. I said it. There you <laughs> go. said it. Right. <laughs> Hey, finally. No, just kidding. <laughs> take, we love y'all. Take care. Good chat. We love you too. It was good talking with you. Thanks for making time for us. Thank you. Thank you so much, man. Bye. It's a family reunion. So thank you so much. And uh, uh, Cheap Chat out. Cheap Chat out. Bye.